Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Good afternoon. A variety of precipitation in the region uh, from this morning. We had snow up in Birmingham. Now we're dealing with just some rain here. Uh, just about ready to see this cell hit pretty hard for Omaha. So some heavy rain, just spotty out there. But the cold front about to pass through the area in the next hour or so as predicted. And as far as conditions go for today, we're still weather aware. We're going for a high about 47 right where we're at right now. Breezy and cold. This is WRBL News 3 on your side. The big chill blasts through a large portion of the country and is now in our area. This midday, Columbus police need your help identifying the driver of this car. Plus, a local woman is in jail this afternoon accused of attempted murder. Your number one news source for local midday news starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 Midday. Good afternoon and welcome to News 3 Midday. Thank you for trusting us as your number one local news source at noon. I'm Greg Lloyd. The big story this midday is the big chill blanketing approximately three quarters of the country. It's slowly been making its way to us as well. Meteorologist Jeff Kelly joins us from the News 3 First Alert Storm Center with a preview of what we can expect in the coming hours. Jeff? All right, Greg, the temperature is going to cool down behind this cold front. It's been chilly out there. We're seeing a cold rain right now, not dealing with the snow as we expected. These temperatures stayed a little too warm for us to get the snow, at least in our viewing area. Alexander City did have a few snowflakes. They're at 37 right now. It's 50 in Albany and America. As we take a look at our radar right now, I showed you off the top of the show there. Omaha area and going towards Fort Benning. We're going to see some uh, pretty strong um, showers for a very short duration there. And you can see the front moving from west to east and behind it, that colder air. And uh, just wanted to show you the Atlanta metro area. Saw some snowflakes flying around there, but things look pretty good. Now the thing we're concerned about is the potential for some black ice as that drier, colder air whips into the area over the next several hours. And then by tonight, we'll be dropping off those temperatures quite a bit. I'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while, Greg. Okay, Jeff, thank you so very much. Well, pictures of what Mother Nature left behind across the southeast region have been trickling into the News 3 newsroom throughout the morning. These pictures come to us from Birmingham. There, the system moved in with some heavy rain early this morning before turning into snow. All told, between one to two inches fell there. That's nothing, though, when you compare it to what this system has dumped on many other parts of the country. John Lawrence offers us a look at the big picture of the big chill. Cars stuck on icy roads, long lines in the piggly wiggly, and snow blowers working overtime. Just trying to get the first round done, and the second round will be a little bit later. A winter blast has a grip on much of the United States. I had planned to do a bunch of work today at work, but uh, you know, it's Minnesota, it happens. Roughly 220 million Americans. About 75% of the population of the contiguous U.S. will have temperatures fall below freezing over the next few days. The cold is just starting. So this will be at the highest level throughout the whole week, dealing with the weather increments and making sure that the people of the city of Chicago, that their safety and their security is our number one priority. The big chill will hit the upper Midwest and Great Lakes area especially hard. Forecasters say temps will drop between 20 to 40 degrees below freezing. Wind chills could fall to 60 below. Even areas not used to frigid temps are preparing. In Atlanta, city officials are getting ready for the Arctic front and the Super Bowl. We have prepared, we've made additional investments in equipment to help clean our sidewalks and keep our sidewalks de-iced. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has closed all state offices for Tuesday. I'm John Lawrence reporting. As always, you can count on WRBL News 3 and the First Alert weather team to keep you covered. Download the First Alert weather app. You can find it in the App Store for iPhone or Google Play Store for Android devices. And you'll always be up to date with the latest today, tomorrow, and always from News 3. In Georgia politics this midday, Georgia election officials are asking a judge to toss a lawsuit that challenges the way the state's elections are run. Lawyers for the Secretary of State's office and state election board members filed a motion yesterday to dismiss the lawsuit. The sweeping lawsuit asked that Georgia be required to get a federal judge's approval before enacting any voting rules. It was filed by Fair Fight Action, a group associated with unsuccessful Democratic gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams. 
Across Alabama, the family of a man killed by police who apparently mistook him for a gunman in a mall shooting has asked the Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall to meet with them and release the video of that Hoover Mall shooting. The parents of Amantic E.J. Bradford Jr. held a news conference yesterday to ask for an update on the case. The 21-year-old was killed by a Hoover police officer responding to a shooting at the Galleria Mall back on November the 22nd. In political news, Donald Trump's longtime friend Roger Stone has pleaded not guilty to charges in the special counsel's Russian investigation. Stone appeared this morning for his arraignment at the federal courthouse in Washington. He spent the weekend blasting special counsel Mueller and the case against him as politically motivated. Prosecutors say he lied about the contents of his discussion with the Trump campaign involving WikiLeaks and that he hacked material damaging to Hillary Clinton and released it during the 2016 campaign. Stone denies all those allegations. Around the world, in Mexico, fire broke out in a clandestine gasoline pipeline in the state of Hidalgo. Local authorities stressed that the presence of military personnel in that area guaranteed the security of the perimeter within which the fire occurred. Almost two weeks ago, at least 66 people were killed after a pipeline explosion in that same area. The tragedy was related to fuel theft attempts in that pi pipeline. And for more information on these and other stories, we invite you to stay with us around the clock by following us on social media, WRBL on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and of course, always on at WRBL.com. To the Crime Watch this midday, and Columbus police are asking for the public's help in identifying a hit and run driver. Police ask that anyone with information on the driver of this car contact them. Investigators say the driver struck a pedestrian on Victory Drive near the Holiday Inn back on January the 12th. The pedestrian was left with serious injuries, and police want to find the person responsible. Opelika police announced an arrest this morning of a local woman on an attempted murder charge. Police say 24-year-old Shavandra Harris of Auburn stabbed a man in the neck and stomach at the Golden Cherry Motel. Police say they learned about it when the victim came to the hospital. Police say Harris is awaiting a bond hearing. Investigators discovered a man's dead body yesterday in a wooded area behind the Boys and Girls Club here in Columbus. And it's all thanks to a local teacher. Muskogee County Deputy Coroner Charles Newton says some kids apparently stumbled across the body on Sunday. They didn't report it. They just took pictures of it. Today, they went to school with the pictures and started showing them. So the teacher in their class saw it. She called 911. I'm glad the school teacher saw the pictures because he could have been out here much longer. And they were not able to get his fingerprints because he had been on the ground for at least a couple of three days. Authorities have confirmed that the body is that of an African-American man believed to be around 70 years old. An autopsy will be performed. Yesterday marked seven years since the remains of a little girl were found in Opelika. The child's remains were found in the Brookhaven Mobile Home Park. Police still have not found out the true identity of the little girl they refer to as Baby Jane Doe. No arrest have been made in her death. Anyone with information is asked to call the Lee County Sheriff's Office. Still to come on News 3 Midday, are you excited about Super Bowl 53? Well, if you're not headed to Atlanta, but you still want to make it festive and fun this weekend, we have a wonderful suggestion coming up on News 3 Midday.